Are we live? Are we on? We are. I think, yeah, I, you know, that little red button comes up in the top left-hand corner, and I had this moment of, oh, no, have I said something? Have I said something which someone heard live? But we're not. We're here. And uh, I'm just going to uh, talk for a few moments whilst um, some folk jump onto the live stream, and uh, they will notice that the level of intelligence and looks has gone up this evening. Uh, <laughs> because we've got Katie and Halima. We've got Katie and Halima, everybody. And like, if you listen very closely <laughs> to the speaker, you can hear rapturous applause. Um, <laughs> and it's fantastic to see both of you here. Look at those. There's a lot of teeth tonight. We don't have a lot of smiling faces. I'm They're doing lovely. more teeth. I'm doing more teeth because Helena's yes. got so, um, she's got so many teeth. I thought I, I, she's got great teeth. I'm saying it's com competition. Teeth. A lot of beautiful teeth tonight. <laughs> she's got great Which teeth. Which is amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, so I guess uh, uh, the subject that we're going to dive into this evening is this. How do you win at Instagram? That's definitely something on my mind tonight, which is one of the reasons that we've invited Halima. I think we're going to dive into uh, just generally social media stuff. And, uh, and I'd love to know Katie's views, because I've got a funny feeling you're not a massive fan of social media, but you've done more of it since joining pop-up business school or maybe there's some social media that you like more than others so we're going to get into that we're going to get into uh you know what are the thought processes that we go through when we're thinking about growing a business on social media we're going to find out what Halima's learned um Halima's running online courses as well Katie ran some online courses for pop-up recently and as you know we like to plan those in advance for quite a long period of time. I reckon you must have had about 25 minutes notice before we decided to do that. If you don't include the hours that you were asleep for. Um, so we're going to talk about, you know, the, the difficulties and the challenges, but also the cool things about delivering online courses. We're going to talk about women in business. We're going to talk about handling trolls and negativity online. We're going to talk, basically, we're going to talk about whatever the hell we want, but that was my sort of starter for 10. So if you don't like any of that, everybody, uh, then just stick a question in the group and go, can you stop talking about that and talk about something else instead? And uh, I'm fully up for that tonight. And I've just seen your background, Halima. It says you're a fearless learner. I love that. Can you see that? It's yeah. apostrophe missing because it fell. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> for my students. <laughs> right, we're going to start a hunt for this group. Where is Halima's apostrophe? That's going to be the next little <laughs> challenge that we go for. But look, in between all of this stuff, Halima, welcome. And Katie Coombs, welcome. Brilliant to see you guys. Uh, Halima, what are you doing here? How on earth did this happen? Oh, uh, my God, such an awesome story, if I say so myself. <laughs> it's your story um, you it's already awesome <laughs> um so um what part of the story exactly well i guess let's dive into let's go straight into um how uh how we met actually let's start there because i think we'll start there and then we'll go back to the stuff that you were doing prior to pop up and then we'll talk about the business that you launched after pop up because i think there's a really nice link there and then we'll okay. meander away around that and i'll bring katie in too Awesome. Um, okay, so um, last year I met Pop Up. Um, I think it was in November. I'm pretty sure it was in November. Um, I should know the exact day. I mean, it's such an important time because um, so much happened after that. Um, before that, um, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't have any friends um, in London um, because I'd been traveling around before that. Um, I was outside the country for um, 10 years. So I came back and I was a tourist um, and I didn't know anybody. All my school friends had moved on and had kids and um, you know what I mean? So um, it was hard for me to come back. And it was like so, so difficult at that time because it, it, I didn't know what to do. Like um, I was like feeling really down and um, I didn't know how to make friends because let's face it, like it's so hard to make friends in in England, I think, in London. I don't know why I made it so, like, in London. Um, I, I found it difficult because I'm an introvert and um, just going in, uh, going in front of someone and saying hello is very, very difficult. So um, I um, 
met Simon at pop up. I remember it was at 10 o'clock um, on a Monday morning. I actually had um, a business course the the a few days before that I had to go to and I paid money for that one. It was uh, around 60 pounds. And um, I decided not to go. I don't know why, but I was like, this doesn't give me the vibe that it's going to help me. I didn't want to go anywhere that I would waste my time. So then, and I decided to go to this um, free um, business school. I was like, this is for sure going to be really, really bad. I, I was like <laughs> expecting it. I was, I, I'm going to be honest. It was just, I thought that it wasn't going to be very good. And um, I always sit right at the front and I was like, okay, let me give them a chance. And it blew me away. It was like, I, I had been studying business for a very long time. Um, I think two years and a half at that point, I think, um, around that time. Um, and I knew, okay, I was like, I've learned, I've learned the bad way to do business and I learned the good way to do business. And it was just like lots and lots of like knowledge bombs being dropped. And I was like, I paid thousands and thousands of dollars for this knowledge. And I was just looking around and like, does anybody know the secret? Like, does anybody know that? all this information is like worth so much money. That's what was going on in my head. And I was just blown away. I was like, this is incredible. So like, Nima, I knew you were one of our best students like, that week. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. You were one of our best students that week. You sat in the front every day. Oh, you made you. notes. <laughs> you asked us really, really tricky questions. I remember <laughs> that. Cause you would like, you know, give me more knowledge. Give me more knowledge. I love that. And, um, just before we move on, um, I just wanted to say we've got a bunch of uh, lovely welcoming faces. There's a lot of pop up people in the in the live stream at the moment. Um, we've got uh, Helen, Joanna, Kim, Rania, Lisa. We've got Julian. Hey, Julian from uh, the town where I was born, down in Romsey. Graham Carter's back. The lovely Patricia from the London pop up crew. Alan Evans, Elizabeth. Uh, we've got Alia. Um, uh, Alia, are you friends with Alia? She said, Halima, I'm so sad to miss this. I'm on a conference call and I can't wait to watch the recording. So that's all good. Um, and Colleen's here, Emmy and uh, Stephen and so on. Um, Stephen's saying he went to a Newport course. He's doing really well three, three years on and learned a lot, which is fantastic. So thank you for your nice comments. I'll pay you later. Uh, for anyone watching, uh, we didn't put you up to that. But well, that's a lovely thing to say and I'm so glad that you took value from it. Um, the thing that's on my mind is that before you came to pop up, you already had an Instagram account with a big following, right? And yeah. let, let's talk about that. What, what was that thing that you launched uh, and, and how did that roll? Um, so I'm an English as a second language teacher and I've been doing that for um, seven years now. Um, and um, I decided to go online. And the reason why I went online, I actually started with um, YouTube um, and then I opened up Instagram. Um, and the reason I did that was because I had a vision. I, um, one, uh, I was in a classroom in Saudi Arabia and I thought, wow, it, it feels great to be teaching 30 students. What would it be like if I could teach more than 30 students? What if I could reach more people? And that's how YouTube and Instagram started. Yeah. And what was it like for you going on Instagram and, and YouTube? Um, you know, did you have any fear of doing it? Because you said <laughs> you're an introvert. And if you're yeah. anything like me, and I was really nervous, and I'm going to ask Katie a similar question in a minute. What was it like for you when you first started posting videos online and, and putting out your content? Okay, so I was absolutely terrified. I think if you if you could find anybody more terrified than me, I would be surprised at that time. Um, so it was very, very uncomfortable um, for me to be um, to take pictures of myself, to record videos, to go live. Everything was scary. And it was just completely opposite of um, my personality. Even as a young child, I would run away if my mom tried to take pictures. So you have like pictures of my entire family and my hand running away like in the in the picture. So I really did not like anything to do with videos, cameras. I just, I, 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 I was a shy child and as an adult introvert and I didn't like being center of attention. But, so yeah. you don't like being center of attention. The photographs of you as a now child. I don't mind. <laughs> but I'm now, just trying to think, uh, <laughs> you've got, you've got like 16,000 followers on just one of your accounts. Mm -hmm. 
what was the thing that made you keep going? Because because if you're terrified and you're scared and you did it, but you carried on doing it, what was the thing that went in your mind that went, yeah, I've done a few now, I'm going to keep going. What, what went through your head? This is amazing. I think it's it's because I, I'm a resilient person, so I don't give up easily. Um, and especially if it's something that I want to achieve, I, I want to reach a million on YouTube. Um, and that's like my dream. Um, and that's something that like keeps me going. I'm like, okay, I will reach to, at, to that point where I will be better. And there's people around me as well that would encourage me to keep going and, and you know, um, make me feel better. I remember like recording videos and just blinking so much that's what I do when I'm like super nervous I blink a lot and if you go to my, if you go to Blackboard English actually after watching this you can do that you can go and watch my first video ever and it's absolutely horrible like it's just horrible like I'm so stiff and I'm like hi like it was horrible <laughs> but I did it and and people still make fun of me um, when they go back to those videos but I'm like that is that's like my battle scars you know like I feel proud that I kept going and I think I heard someone saying once um you, whatever you do if you um if you do it like in a bad way if you keep doing something in a bad way whether you like it or not you keep getting better so you eventually you will get there so I just had that in my head I'm like okay you'll keep getting better and I'm a perfectionist so all my videos I used to take like around three days for one video. So a whole day of recording, stopping, I'm like, that wasn't good enough. And I'll do it again and I'll do it again. And it was it was terrifying, but I just kept doing it. So that's I love that. Uh, I've got so many questions. What I want to do is to give an opportunity to people that are watching. And we've got a bunch of people that have tuned in to find out how do you take an Instagram account from zero to 16,000? How can you make these videos and stick them out there? And all of the, tech, the techniques that you use and the tips and tricks, I know you're going to be very generous because you always give away all of your best stuff whenever we've spoken, which is amazing. I feel, by the way, I feel very humble that you sat through the pop-up business school social media uh, day when you came to oh. our event last year and you had 16,000 followers and you didn't tell anybody until that day, which yeah. is amazing. I love that. Right. So yeah, I'm going to invite people to post their questions in the thread. Jack will put a link to your Instagram page uh, at Blackboard English, and he'll put a link to your YouTube channel as well. He'll pin that inside the thread so that people can then click on that and so on. We've already, you're going to love this. We've already got a couple of people. So Helen, Helen Lawson, uh, who Katie knows very well, Helen has posted, I saw Halima's page today. I can't believe she had any fear. She's sensational, so wow. warm and natural. <laughs> That's which is exactly what comes across. And I, I, I want to get Katie in on this one now. So Katie, let's talk about this thing. Like we've basically bullied you into doing social media since you joined pop up uh, a couple of years ago. Now it's coming up two years. It's about two years now, isn't it? Something like that. Is it two years? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Two years yeah. in um, uh, May. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, life's never quite been the same since then. And I make no apology for that, as you know, uh, <laughs> but we bullied you into social media. What? Well, uh, how much social media were you doing before pop up? And I know that you've done some videos. In fact, we got you to do a video before you joined the team as well. What, what was your experiences of making videos and, and sticking yourself on social media? Oh God, before um, pop up, not nothing. I didn't do anything on social media. Um, I didn't like talking to the camera. Look, to be honest, if I'm really honest now, this is a really uncomfortable position for me. So when I get a message from you or Jack to come on here, I always say, yep, can't wait. And there's an element of me that can't wait. And there's another <laughs> element of me that she's like, oh my God. And that's all I think about all day. Oh, Sorry about that. Do you want less yeah. notice next time? Should I just text you <laughs> like 10 minutes before? <laughs> because, well, it, it's just it's just who I am. And rather than, there was the old me would have found an excuse. The old me would have said, oh, I'm not available or something's going on, but kind of, what pop-ups taught me is just go for it. And um, I just think, oh, well, what the hell? How bad can it be? What's the worst thing that can happen? And so I always do it. And I, I'll admit that I don't watch myself back. I've not got to that point yet. I don't want to see neither. myself back. <laughs> um, because in case it throws me a little bit. So it's not a, it's not a natural place for me. But then neither is standing in front of people and talking. 
it's not a natural place for me, but it's like a, almost like a, a forced, that sounds like really uncomfortable, a forced state that I put myself in because I know that when I do it, uh, the benefits of it and how I feel afterwards and even during uh, are amazing, are amazing. So doing this, this tonight is a, um, it's a push, it's uncomfortable. It's what I talk about at Pop-Up Business School. It's really uncomfortable. And then the other day when I was doing this on Zoom, um, I'm not sure if I was on to you it was, or it was, uh, some, it was Alan. And Lindsay, my wife, brought me a cup of tea. She just brings me a cup of tea. I think it's because she wants to get her face on the camera. And, um, and then afterwards she went, you pouting at the camera when you're on Zoom. I'm like, I'm not. She went, you're pouting. I was like, I'm not a very pouty person. She went, you pout, you do that face when you look in the mirror. Do you know that mirror face we all have that we're not really aware of? We all do it. And then when people point it out, you're like, what, what do you mean? That's just my face. But actually, I'm doing a bit of that. And I have no idea. And that really threw me as well. I was like, I wish you hadn't said that now. So, yeah, so I'm struggling with this the whole time. I'm struggling with it the whole time. But I'm also um, having great fun, doing new things, pushing myself. And that's where, that's where life is, isn't it? Helena, do you pout? Helena, oh, do you sorry. pout? I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> I was thinking about something. Um, yeah, um, the, the mirror pouting thing. Um, <laughs> I have my own pouting, which is the blinking. Like I said, oh, okay. I just kind yeah. of blink a lot. And that's, <laughs> it's weird. But it's, yeah, I completely understand though, um, Katie. Um, I think <laughs> we have the same vibe when it comes to this whole like, video thing and and it surprises me every time someone says oh my god please teach me how you go in front of the camera and just appear so natural i'm just like are you talking to me like <laughs> what's going on here like i don't understand what's happening so i completely get it like i um it's completely uncomfortable and for those of you watching and thinking okay how do i like get over that and i'll tell you from my experience is i just kept doing it yeah. I just kept pushing that, that live button. I kept pushing that record button. And that was the only way I, I got over my fear of recording video. I like, there's no other way I can tell you like, oh, okay. Like there's like a shortcut where you just transform. Um, and another thing is one more thing. Sorry. Can I add to that? Is, uh, is when you be kind to yourself, when you make mistakes, because I, I used to like basically internally bully myself every time I would make a mistake in front of the camera and start all over again. Embrace those little mistakes that you make and just say, oh, excuse me, I'll, you know, mm. this is what I meant. Just like you would if you were talking to a friend outside in the street. Yeah. I mean, your, your videos, you do come across as supernatural and, and it does, uh, it does uh, remind me of what it's like meeting you in person. So I think your, your strategy of, and I don't know, you're probably not that deliberate. I think you're, you're kind of going, no, I'm just going to be me on the camera. Yeah. And that what's, uh, to me, that's what makes your videos so much more engaging. Um, and I think I'm interested to know, uh, was it a sliding scale of you gradually got more confident the more videos that you did? Or was there a moment, you know, after video number 20 or video number five or video number 30 that something clicked and you went, yeah, that's, yeah, I'm in, I, this is my, I'm in my flow now. And, and I, and I, you know, what was your experience of that? I think um, it, it, you just stop feeling as uncomfortable. I think even Katie, like right now, I'm uncomfortable, you know, it's, I pretend I'm not, but Sorry. I am. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, we haven't even yeah. got to the tough questions yet you can't be <laughs> uncomfortable yet no it's just the idea is like that um you will get uncomfortable and there's like a, a percentage of being uncomfortable but what i've noticed is that that being uncomfortable um is greater i mean the discomfort is greater when i stop so if i take a break for like three months and i don't record a video it goes, it comes back for some reason. It's like you're starting all over again. So it's, I've definitely noticed that it's a doing it every day thing, uh, making sure that you are being consistent when it comes to recording videos. Cool. I love this. Uh, okay. So uh, there's a question from, uh, from the lovely Lisa Cornwall in Somerset. Lisa's asking a question, which I'm going to kind of add a bit to. And by the way, the questions that you have about Instagram in particular, YouTube too, running online courses, please post your questions in the thread. 
If you want to know about how to use Instagram stories effectively, how to choose the right hashtags, what time of day to post, how regular to post, um, Halima's got a view and she'll give you her opinion. She's got lots of experience of doing it. Every time I turn around, you've launched a new Instagram account, which is very exciting. <laughs> Halima. Let's talk about the other stuff that you're doing. But um, look, I guess um, the question from Lisa is she wants to get her message out there. Uh, and she, she started off by going, you know, it, should I use Facebook or should I use Instagram? And I know it's a personal choice and depends on where your customers are. I'm interested to know why you chose to then launch an Instagram account after you'd started doing YouTube videos. What was your thought process behind diving into Instagram? And then we can get into some of the detail about how you grew it. Um, OK, so that's a good question. So at the end of the day, you have to think about your ICA. And I know I, I'm like a broken record when it comes to the ideal customer avatar, which is the person you're trying to attract. You really have to have them in your mind when you are doing anything in your business. And I think pop-up business teaches us that as well at the very beginning is like, know who your ideal customer is. Uh, and then she will give you, or he, she or he will give you the answer to your question. So I mean, and, and I all, I'm always saying this and I feel like sometimes we have to say things a million times for people to understand. I know for me, I had to hear it so many times, but don't like make that, um, don't make the same mistake. Don't like wait for three, four, five people to say the same message again and again for you to kind of put in your head that your ICA is the one that you should be like referring to. So for me, my students hang out the most on Instagram. They're there and, and, and on YouTube. So there's two different things. So on Instagram, they, wanna, they don't want to see long videos. Um, people are starting to create long videos. So they're learning about that more. But there's um, with YouTube, um, a lot of countries block YouTube. So for example, Iran, they can't see YouTube videos. So Instagram, they're able to see IGTV stories and so on. So that's like some of the, the reasons, but um, you have to know what, where your ICA is at. And, and um, like recently I just asked my, like for, um, <clears throat> for the social hop um, business, I actually asked my ICA and she said, I hang out on LinkedIn the most. I was like, cool. So that's where I have to be. She's not on Instagram because if she was on Instagram, she wouldn't need my help, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's why you have to ask her. You have to actually get on a call and talk to your ICA. Cool. And if you were launching, uh, so let's say your, your ICA, I love that term. I've never heard that before. So uh, your ideal customer avatar. So when you're scrolling down, you kind of go, yes, she's my customer or he's my customer. And, and, and then you start following them. I want, I would just, I'm really interested to know that based because all of the learning experiences that you've had, of launching an Instagram channel, and I know you're doing some others as well. Um, I'm gonna ask you for the addresses of those so that we can pin them in the thread in a second. Um, if you were launching an Instagram account tonight, what would be the first few things that you'd be doing? Ima imagine that you kind of knew what you were gonna be doing. You had, a, you had an idea of who your ideal customer avatar mm -hmm. was. What, what are the first few actions that, that you start with to get something from zero or a very, very new account you know, to, to get it into shape? What's, what goes through your mind? I think the, the, the most, I'm going to make notes by the way. <laughs> is, <laughs> so think value. Okay. You want to be, sorry, this, this is like shining. Okay. Um, you want to value is the, the word you should be thinking about when you're on any platform, you want to deliver value to um, the people that are following you. So if you can't do that and, and, and you're just like focusing on yourself and you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna post a pretty picture about myself, it, it, it's not gonna work. The quality of the content has to be very, very high. So that's number one is that the quality of your content is very high. Why should the quality of the content be high is because it will be shared a lot more. When the higher the, the, the content, um, quality the the more shares you'll get so the idea is like first of all i would say do not focus on followers i don't focus on followers i really really don't especially at the very beginning you will get frustrated because you'll get one like a month or something and you're like oh my god this is not working don't focus on followers and a lot of programs online will teach you oh okay like 
this is how you can get followers in these like really really weird ways and I'm just like I hate that so much don't focus on followers focus on the people that are already following you even if it's one person and focus on really like enchanting them and making them feel like um, this is incredible you know what I mean this is content that I can really really use and it can help me I'm gonna go and do whatever they just told me to do so th that's that's what I would think about if I was just starting out is like creating content that's excellent um, and then putting it out there for people to to have value because I think if you're looking if you're a business you need to give someone value way before they um, ever purchase from you and it's so like, Halima, oh, sorry. yeah, go ahead, Katie. I was just going to say, Halima, so when you're starting with this content, are you thinking about your ideal customer, your ICA at that 100%, point? Yeah. And you're thinking, how can I serve them? What do they need from me? And how can I help mm -hmm. in the first and, instance? Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and there's like different categories you can go through to do that. But the first thing I always tell students is that I always call my Instagram students students too because of my English. I'm an English teacher, so I call everyone students <laughs> now. But um, yeah, we're your um, students. We're all your students tonight, Halima. <laughs> but yeah, um, sorry to go back to your question. You said um, uh, thinking about your ideal customer avatar. So, what problems are they um, um, facing at the moment in time? And so again, going on a call with them and making notes like what do you need help with um, how can I help and you can you don't have to go on a call actually like that's that's not the only thing um, <clears throat> you can do you can actually go on um, Instagram I mean not Instagram sorry you can go on YouTube and type like you know things like Instagram and um, watch videos um, of other people and then go on the comments people will be asking questions make note of that and put it aside your customers will share so much information I don't know how to do this I don't know how to do that make um, have a database of all these topics just put them aside and then when it comes to making content you can just refer to that so um, some of the things is like mm -hmm. questions they would ask about your products for example what kind of is it organic or is it organic or why is it organic or whatever it is you answer uh, that question in a post you are giving them value for example, like if it's a product and, and your ideal customer wants to know if that thing is organic, then a post about it being organic is super important. So, Halima, when you're thinking about your ideal customer and you're posting um, what really is in, in information, isn't it? You're trying to help them. Mm -hmm. What point do you get to where you want to convert them? So at the moment, they're, they're followers, they're fans, mm -hmm. and they're, they're looking at your social but you want to turn those followers into paying customers. Okay. So yeah. how do you move them forward into a paying customer to get them to okay, give you the cash? Okay, that's a really good question. Um, and that's something I, I learned the hard way because what I did was I had my Instagram account, like it was free. I didn't tell anybody to do anything um, and or buy anything for a long time um, until someone came up to me and requested. But... Um, <clears throat> What you need to do is before you have an Instagram account, if you already have one, that's fine. But remember that Coca-Cola would never like open up an Instagram account and just kind of like not be known for their products. So they, they have a product first is what I mean. And then they will have a page of, on YouTube or whatever it is that they want to promote. So have the product first, have a package, even if it's just one-to-one -one where the person is like, oh, okay, can I work one-to-one -one with you? Have that ready um, and post that in your um, bio so that they know, okay, if I, if I wanna work with this person, I'll, I'll be able to work with them. And I know it's not just a, it's not for fun or it's not for a, a hobby. This person is actually a business and being aware of that um, yourself and then making them aware that you are a business is such an important part of like thinking, okay, I really want to hire them the next time I want to buy cake for my friend. And, and so making that um, consciously um, available to them, like the information is so important. Like if you're a photographer, for example, sh um, show behind the scenes of you taking pictures 
um, or if you're a baker, you're in the kitchen making the bread. So actually showing them, okay, this is what I do. And if you want, like subconsciously telling them that if you want my services, this is what I do. So um, you're staying on top of mind and you're letting them okay. know about your services in um, different ways. Does that do answer you, the question? Yeah, that's good. I was going to say, do you ever feel as though you're giving too much away? Never. Okay. Yeah, never, ever giving too much away. Um, and another method as well is like also um, getting, um, trying to get your people. D don't, I know I'm an Instagram like specialist or whatever, but I always say, get them off Instagram. Do your best to get these people off Instagram because it's not your platform. <laughs> It doesn't belong to you and it, it things change so quickly that you have to be list building, um, trying to get them to go to your website, yeah. watching content on your website. And then when you say, hey, guys, I have this amazing blog that you can go and check out once they're on your website, even if it's YouTube, even if it's a YouTube video, you should not be sending people to somebody else's house. You should be mm -hmm. making sure that they're coming to your house, which is your website and on there that's when they can discover, okay, the services that you have, the extra things that you can provide for them. Yeah. I notice on your website, you've got um, a download, a PDF. Mm -hmm. And I think that you give your email address. And at that yeah. point, you've got me, haven't you? <laughs> I've got wow. your PDF, but you've got, you've got my email address. And <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. it now, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I like email because um, in... in in my experience, that's been the highest converting thing. All the using Instagram and then sending them to my um, website. And then from there, they are able to join my emails. And then I give them like weekly emails, lots of value. And, um, and usually, you know, students want me to help them through the email, um, you know, when I... So, okay, let me just go back a little bit. Offering is like such an important part of business. And that's another thing that I, I, ha I hate asking people like buy from me. And so, so um, one person needs to know that um, <clears throat> you want to buy from, I mean, you want them to buy from you at least seven times. Like you need to ask them seven different ways. So um, your Instagram is a great way to get them to basically know about your business and asking for that offer. Um, but we can talk about that more if you want later. We've got some interesting you... questions, Halima. I want to fire <laughs> a couple of questions at you and Katie okay, dive go, in on go, this go, as go. well. We can do like okay. a question round, like just yeah, no, we're going to round of questions. Uh, um, it's like loose women, this. <laughs> well, I love that <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> I'm pretending I'm on loose women. <laughs> Um, look, the thing that uh, Lisa's asking is, can you give too much information away for free? Uh, which might discourage the customer from purchasing. Like I know your your thing is all about adding value. Yeah. Is there a place where you you might have found yourself perhaps adding too much value, and then there's less for people to get involved in? Does it work like that, or is it the other way around for you? Okay. So the idea is that you, you um I mean you might have different opinions out there, but for me I think um so if you are going to give information, give it fully. Um, and then when it comes to the course or the the program, you are taking them like systematic, like from the beginning till the end. So that's the difference is like when they take your course, you're, you're teaching them from the very beginning. Sometimes it's customized. Sometimes it's like catered to that one person. Um, and so, you know, their needs and their problems and you can help them directly. But at the end of the day, I think the more value you can give, the better it is for your business because they're not going to want to work with anybody else if they feel like you are the best in your industry and you're, you're, you're generous with your information. And the thought nice. is going to be if she's providing this value when it's free, what is it going to be like to work with her? Yeah. As an honorary loose woman, I've got one more question to <laughs> ask you, and then I'm going to, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to hand over to Katie because I got a couple of questions for, for both of you. Um, Teresa Allen, bless Teresa, she's saying, how do you keep up to date, but not get sucked into the world of social media? She finds it a bit overwhelming because there's so much content available. And I guess linked to that, she's saying, do you try and keep up with your contemporaries? And do, do you kind of look at what other people are doing in your space? for inspiration to, you know, to keep ahead of the competition 
or are you just you kind of ignore that stuff and just you know just focus on adding value for your customers what, what does that look like for you and then i'm going to ask katie a question uh which uh i've written down which is exciting for everybody helima so what do you think how, how do you handle that um in terms of looking at other people's content i try to avoid it as much as i can unless i'm like there's nothing there's no ideas coming to me and i'm like i really need inspiration and even then i won't go to people um in my field so what i'll do is if i want to get inspiration i will go to other people and um even if i do something similar or like it, it won't affect the businesses because it's a completely different business and when you take your content and put it on top of that it just looks new and amazing but if you go to your competition and you're like oh i really like that video let me do the exact same thing most likely they're going to see it somebody else that's following them that's also following you is going to see it and i i, I own, honestly would just stay away from um looking at other people's content because what that ha what happens is we tend to just start to compare they're doing it better their followers um love them and they don't love me i'm not um, good enough so stay in your lane i would say to that answer yeah keep i think that's down great and, advice yeah. yeah great advice <clears throat> katie since you've <clears throat> been doing this social media stuff over yes. the last couple of years uh, what have been your experiences, you know, good and bad when you, when you, cause I know, I think you're a little bit like me, uh, uh, you know, you go with it when your energy's there and you kind of get involved in stuff and then you sort of disappear back into the shadows for a bit and then you come back. I, I do it exactly the same. I just wonder, you know, have your attitudes to it changed any uh, and what have your experiences been of doing some of the social media stuff over the last couple of years? Um, I think that I get lost in it is, is the thing. And when um, uh, Halima was talking about comparing, so I, um, I compare myself. I know I shouldn't. I know that those lives aren't real. But even though with all that logical information, um, I'm comparing my life and, and what I'm doing to other people all the time. And it's usually um, the Beckhams, which is a bit of a strange, a strange thing to do. Though I don't know why. I, but I still do it. I still do it. Look at the the Beckhams, all of their social media accounts. because We look a bit like David and Victoria, you and me. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I tend to get lost in it. And I, I do exactly as you said. So when I'm on pop-up, I get onto Facebook and I'm all, I'm going for, I'm on Twitter and I'm on it. And then I'm on Instagram and I'm, I'm roaring and I'm, I'm on there constantly and I'm chatting away to people and I'm loving it. And then I'm realizing I'm not actually moving forward. I'm just reading lots of other people's stuff. And I stop commenting and I stop adding value and I just read other people's stuff. And then I get on Twitter and then I'm noticing all the politics and all the hate and I get lost in that. And then I've lost three hours. And then I think, right, that's it. I'm deleting Twitter. So I take the app off my phone. I do the same with Instagram and I do the same with Facebook. The only one I keep is LinkedIn. Yeah. Because I kind of like LinkedIn quite a lot. And I yeah, think that's you're very where... good on that. You're very good on that. Well, I want to um... get better and I'm, I'm interested in um, talking to Halima and have her view on LinkedIn as well. In fact, I've just got a book. I talk about this whole, and I thought I'd better buy a copy, which is in LinkedIn inbound. So I'm not a great reader of business books. I know that maybe I shouldn't admit that on Pop-Up Business School because everybody on Pop-Up Business School just reads business books the whole time. And I'm not. But anyway, I bought one. Alan, Jack if you're does. watching, Jack I've reads got one. Them. Does he read all of them? <laughs> and uh, so I want to get really good on LinkedIn because I like LinkedIn. Because there's no, there's not too much arguing and it's about work and it's about business and there's lots of entrepreneurs on there and I kind of get into it. But um, yeah, so I, I have a funny relationship with it where I'm all out going for it and then I just pull straight back because I feel as though I waste too much time. I go down a rabbit hole with it. So I'm very interested in, in discipline around it because I know it's incredibly powerful. And I meet people all the time who are running their businesses and have a full pipeline from this social selling idea where really you're not out almost you're not phoning people up you're not cold calling people are coming to you mm, mm. and when I've been using LinkedIn a bit I have had people come to me and offer me speaking gigs because of LinkedIn yeah so I'm very I'm much more open to it before pop-up business school I didn't really understand at all and I didn't understand video either I hadn't really done a video you made me do it Yes, we. Sorry about that. We, yeah. To be fair, you nailed the video. You did a great job. Hey, look. I guess Halima, I'm interested to know. I want to get into some of the detail because I know this will be interesting to folk watching. 
Um, Graham, uh, lovely Graham in Portsmouth says, comparison is the so he's kind of agreeing with the, some of the stuff that we're saying. Sonia, um, Sonia's fab. We know Sonia Okabule, uh, who's uh, doing, may, be making some cooking videos. She's kind of saying that's the thing that she needed to hear today is to stop comparing. So that mm -hmm. stuff is is super useful to hear you say and staying in your lane. A couple of people are commenting on that. Um, Emma's enjoying the approach. Elizabeth's asked the question, um, if you have a product, what free value can you offer if your thing is a physical thing? Because you're kind of going, you've got a service that you can, yeah. you can give little bite-sized bits of your service and deliver it in lots of different ways. If you've got a physical product, what value can we add then? What do you reckon? What have you seen people do? Um, so it depends. <clears throat> it depends on the, the product. Um, so there's different ways of, um, uh, say, for example, if it's like a health, I don't know, product, you would start teaching, you know, the health benefits of certain vitamins, for example. So you have to go around and think, how can I deliver value, but it's associated with the product that I'm selling. Um, and, and so from there, you can, the, the, the product can be like the end thing that the person would need. But before they, they get to that, what, what information do they need to know about? in order to um, get that product. So for example, shoes, I don't know why shoes is in my head. Um, <clears throat> there's certain like things that you need to make people aware. Like for example, the other day I saw someone saying heels are horrible, you know, like what kind of heels are not, you know, like where does the, um, the actual heel have to be for it to be comfortable? And, and it was just like, wow, that's amazing. I want like from now on all the shoes I buy are going to be <laughs> the heels going to be at the bottom and not like sticking out a little bit at the you know so that it's uncomfortable so for me it's um if I was somebody's avatar I I, I really I don't like feeling uncomfortable with my shoes so making me aware of that um making me understand that you know <clears throat> how to walk in shoes I don't know high heels or um what kind of um material helps um, the person who's wearing those shoes. So it, it, it just depends, I think, on the product. And you just think, what would my um, ICA want to know? Um, and sometimes with products, it's <clears throat> it can be trickier, obviously, than online information, but just be um, answered lots of questions about like the product that people would want to, um, on, I mean, have answered. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And ju uh, jewellery is the business, I think, that Elizabeth's in, and she's just mentioned. So I guess, you know, we could do things like uh, how the product's made, where you get your inspiration from, perfect, what kind of jewellery fits with what kind of clothing. Yeah, and exactly. I was colours say that. that suit you, um, eyes. So, and I don't know. I'm making that up now. Sometimes but, yeah. it, <laughs> it's just like, you did great, man. Like all I, those, I don't have those any things. apart from uh, this. <laughs> I don't wear any jewellery. But the idea is like, okay, so I'm not a jewellery wearer. So how do I wear jewelry? Can I wear like patterns with, um, um, you know, a chunky necklace? Do I need to wear it? Like there's so many questions. How can I do it? Like, so educating people on how to be fashionable with the jewelry, um, how to, um, you know, wear it and giving them ideas on how to wear it would be a really great example. Um, maybe sometimes even um, using the same jewelry to create like a, a bracelet or a belt or whatever it is. So you are giving them that value, like to say, oh, wow, like that's an incredible product. Where can I find that product? So just by adding, like you said, lots of information around that and helping them, um, you know, deliver that value before they, they even um, purchase from you. And another thing is like also sharing, like if you do stuff for your business. So if you buy like, you know, um, a product, 10% gets given to some, like um, a charity, for example. People want to know that information, um, especially with products. Um, I mean, with both, I guess. But Yeah, um, but it all makes great content, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It all makes There's great a content. lot of things you can share, but the idea is just have it around delivering value for that person. If it's an accessory, how can I wear that accessory? I have no idea how to wear that piece of African jewelry. How do I wear it? Um, can you give me lots of examples? Can you show me um, how I can wear it differently? How I can um, take it to the next level? Um, you know what I mean? Just th those kinds of, um, I think, tips. 
will help. I think how to videos value. as well, how things are made are great for artists and crafters oh, yeah. Yeah. to show people. I mean, we all love to, you know, to see that musicians, singers, artists, crafters, and there's bags of content that you can produce there. And also people's stories. You know, we talk a lot about building trust with people. And one of the ways is just to be honest and to be truthful and to show them the, you know, the, the adventure you're on with your business and being and letting people have a look at it, if you like, of what you're doing and what you're up to and why you're doing it. So there's, there's lots you can do, but it means putting yourself out there a little bit and, ex, you know, I would say exposing yourself a little bit in the best way. <laughs> it's not that kind of show, but let's, no, uh, no. maybe next time, maybe next time. Hey, look, um, a question in my mind, and I, I know that Katie gets asked this question a lot as, as well as as well as me. Uh, I bet you do as well, Halima, when you've been helping people with, uh, with Instagram. Uh, how often is the right frequency for posting? Uh, you know, should you be doing something every day? Should you be doing something twice a day, three times a week? Sometimes people are hesitant because they go, I don't want to overload people in my feed. I don't want them to get bored of what I'm doing or I'm kind of running out of content now. I've kind of said everything I want to say. What, what do I do now? Have you got a sense of, you know, since you've been doing this a little while, of what a, what a good frequency, if you're someone who's serious about growing, a following on Instagram or indeed any of the other platforms. What's your, what's your advice on the, the frequency of, of posting? Well, I would um, go to the, the, the question that I answered is go for quality rather than quantity. So just taking things out there and saying, Oh, I'm going to produce three videos a day and they're just worthless. Um, I think focus on how much can, how much can you actually create? Um, in a long period of time. So yes, I know you're excited right now. Um, for the next three days, you can post 10 times a day, but in a month or two months or three months when you feel like there's no attraction, there's nothing happening. Um, and then, you know, you want to go back to maybe once a month. I think the idea is to understand, okay, what are your capabilities, quality versus um, quantity and um, really being intentional when it comes to your ICA, your business. Um, and um, I think that's, that's the things you sh that should be in your head when you are, you are posting. Um, in terms of the algorithm and everything, Instagram loves it when you post. Like it's just it's something they, they want everybody to keep posting, right? Um, but they will show it to a percentage of your audience. So you have a thousand audience, they'll show a small percentage and what happens is if that percentage reacts really well they'll show more and then more and then eventually it will end up in the um you know the the, the search i forgot the name <laughs> but the the discovery page yeah um so the idea is like it's like it just the, the first hour or two is so important so when you can get your family and friends to like your posts and to give it that extra boost um at the very very beginning is super helpful even liking it yourself um don't comment though that's it. unless you're like saying like um let me know what is the best i don't know ice cream and then um but like i've seen some people comment on their own thing and say oh this is great content i'm like this is weird can i just ask a question yeah do you um do you have a plan of what you're going to post so do you have um next week's plan and do you have all your posts ready and you know what you're going to do or do you wake up in the morning and go what should i what should i post today so I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you so i have different um so depending on where i'm at um in the business i'm focusing or, or i i tend to do weekly so that's what i found like works with me um so at the beginning of the week i'm like i want to post about this this and this and this during the week so i'll do um, a quick plan um, and and uh, and, then, and then I'll like have like pictures and stuff like that ready for that week um, and and sometimes when I'm like on the bus or um, I'm doing nothing I'll create the descriptions because now I've done it for so long that it's just something that it, it doesn't take me very long um, to create um, but having said that like I have like different kind of periods where I've gone through scheduling everything um, a month in advance and I'm like oh did I just post um, uh, something like uh, to like posting like last minute I, I would not 100% recommend posting last minute it does drain you it does make you feel like oh my god oh my god I have to post something and you're not using the um, pre 
prefrontal cortex, which is in charge of your planning. So when, when you're not using that, you're using the other side of your brain, which is like um, the, the one that's like reaction. React, I, I forgot the name of that one, but anyway. I call that the downstairs brain. The monkey brain. <laughs> I have, yeah. yeah, they have the upstairs and the downstairs brain. The uh -huh. upstairs for the clever executive stuff and yes. the downstairs for... <gasps> I don't know what you're talking about. That's the one Can't I recognize. Do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is there a very, is there a good time of day to post, Talima? Have you have you got any thoughts on? Is it morning, evening? Do you Depends have you got any tips people, for avoiding the the the, 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 the cull? That are following you. Yeah. Right. That's it. Okay. The people that yeah. are every every page has their own kind of accumulative best time to post. For example, for um for me, I have this app that lets me know when Blackboard English, most people are online. And every single day is different. And it's it's kind of weird because each week I'll go on there and I'm like, okay, Monday at 3.15, Tuesday, you know what I mean? And and it will let me know. So it's um it's called when to post, when to post like okay. the, the app. But that's like Apple. I'm not sure about people that have Samsung. Does it, um, because some of your customers um, aren't UK based, do you ha does things have to go out at strange times or have you found that's not something? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a really good question. Um, before I answer that, could could you change the, um, the what's called the YouTube one? Because I mean, I don't think anybody could find value in that one um, because yeah, it's sure. my what's, English and I don't want do people watching videos of me. <laughs> <laughs> where do you want to send people Halima where, where should um, they go if you could send them to the social hop um yeah sure the social the socialhop.com yeah um yeah that's where all of my information is the socialhop.com well, let's do that just let's before I forget I was like staring at this pin <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, the socialhop.com we can do that oh just yeah, while you're doing that Simon can I ask a question yeah sure uh, what's your big goal what's the big thing you read you have something in the future Wait, that you imagine you ask me a question before this i feel like i didn't answer your question oh i don't know oh yeah you asked me about the time thing yes yeah. i oh, just yeah. give yeah. them i say gmt and they know it's the uk timing right okay yes. sorry i was just filling because he was out. looking at his phone <laughs> I okay, thought I better yeah, fill on. here. I'll, I'll fill well, with a with a yeah. big question because <laughs> he's not, he's not saying the singing. You know, looking at my phone, going now. I'm typing something in to get Jack to do the thing, and this is this is when you sing. Did we not talk about that? <laughs> oh yes, and I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> look, okay, so uh, you're using some apps to get some information. You're scheduling your posts so that it's not last minute. You're posting regularly, but you're adding value. And I love, I've written down the term enchanting your customers mm. or your that's ICO. A lovely term. It is lovely. And I think that's a really, really cool way to think about this. Um, I guess it doesn't always go right though, does it? There's, there's, you know, something happened in, in our support group tonight, uh, which, you know, left a bad taste in the mouth. Uh, and, you know, some people post some things that are offensive. Some people can be negative. Some people can be racist. Some people can be sexist. And I think some of the folks- that... Okay, so funny. <laughs> like, I'm interested in this because I know <laughs> there are lots of people watching that are fearful of social media because they go, mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to handle it if yeah. someone said something that was nasty uh, and so on. You've had all of this stuff, Halima. Yeah, What's your strategy? How do you deal with this? I think I feel like I'm a walking target, honestly, on, on social media, because um, at the beginning, I used to have a different look. So I would um, put my um, scarf at the top here, mm -hmm. although I like this, this is not how I wear my scarf. But because I had that same fear and I completely understand people going in and not being their authentic self or not showing their pictures um, because of that fear of being attacked and being told, OK, like, you know, you're different, so we hate you. Um, <laughs> so the, the idea is to come into the, the platform um, knowing that's going to happen, expecting it. And actually, like we play like little games um, with my fellow teachers where I tell them, you know, um, you know, we get excited when we get hate. We kind of like say, oh, my God, like we must be like up there when we're getting when we when you get your first hate. So kind of making it like it's a, um, it's kind of it's nothing to do with you, but it's like a 
almost like a milestone to get those um, comments because you're only going to get those comments once you get, go up there and it's okay like, so you, it's like an achievement like i've got my first yeah. uh Hate my first message. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing it's so fascinating because i don't know if you saw the the live stream that we did with the youtuber matt esley who's our yeah. uh joe wicks lookalike carpenter guy you know he's got a hundred and something thousand subscribers to his channel he said exactly the same thing mm -hmm. he gamifies the hate so when he gets nasty comments oh, he really? he has a yeah he has a bit of banter with them and he was really disappointed on twitter a couple of days ago because uh he he said that we've got a contender for troll of the month and he posted the comment and then this person mysteriously disappeared because he made them a feature of his show so i guess uh I wow. guess kind of, you know, facing down the bullies, uh, but, but you know, treating it as, as a bit of fun and a game seems to be the strategy that worked for him too. So it's interesting that your approach is different, but similar. Yeah, so um, one thing I want to add is um, it, it is going to be hate. I mean, it, it's everywhere, but on Instagram, I've noticed that there's less hate on Instagram than there is on YouTube. YouTube seems to be like there's people seem to kind of have this distant uh, like they don't feel like you're there uh, so you're recording the videos and you're going whereas on Instagram you're doing stories they know you're present and they know you're going to read that comment so I've seen less um, not that I'm saying that it doesn't exist it does people will send me private messages telling me things and um yeah, so for me, and when I when I do want to say reply to this person, I will go in hardcore with kindness. And mm -hmm. I, I will like basically show that person that, you know, whatever they're saying, it doesn't mean anything. I'm still going to be the same person. I'm not going to get affected. I'm not going to feel upset. And I will still like deliver that kindness just like I would with anybody else. I love that. I want to ask you, can you believe an hour has gone by already? Um, I just wanted to ask you, and I'm sure Katie's got a question up her sleeve too, just to finish. I, I want to get really granular about, about posting on social media around hashtags. I always get questions about hashtags and we do our best mm -hmm. to answer them. Yeah. I just wonder, you know, <laughs> I feel like people think about them too much. I think, uh, I just wonder, what's your approach to the, to the um the mysterious <laughs> phenomenon that's the hashtag uh, and how much time do you put in you know do you cut and paste the same ones you know do you, how do you research how do you come up with the hashtags to use and how important are they to the posting that you do okay so know that first of all know that um there are different okay so how, where do i start with this all right so l let's let's talk about hashtags first what are they there are folders um, where all the posts go into. So just when you imagine a hashtag, don't imagine a hashtag or imagine an envelope with a hashtag on it. Um, and that's where your post goes into. So every time you use a hashtag, that post goes into that um, envelope. And that's how um, Instagram categorizes its information. So if you don't have a hashtag, it's going nowhere except for your people, the people that um, are following you. Um, and if you're private and you have a private account and you're, you're using hashtags, it won't work. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the first stage to understand what they, they're Nice way to describe for. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. And then the second thing is understanding that there are different types. There's lots of different types of hashtags. And what I would say is use um, three levels of hashtags. And this is getting like all technical, but... <laughs> Bear no, with stick with it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm writing this down any second. As soon as I finish my tea, I'm going to write this down. I love it. This okay. is what we need, Talima. <laughs> so the idea is like you have um, top tier, middle tier, and you know low tier. Is it? <laughs> my English is gone now. Okay. <laughs> so the idea is to um, have. Ha so first of all, understand the hashtags your business is using. So research, look look at what other people are using for re um, research. Um, check other people's posts, what kind of hashtags are they using? Um, and, um, th and you can do, you can go on Explorer. If you're on your phone right now, you can actually go on Explorer. Um, am I able to? Um, yeah, go for it. Go to, go to Explorer and then type the hashtag that you want. For example, um, jewelry. 
And then once you type jewelry, you'll see a hashtag. Click on that. And then at the very top, it will tell you extra hashtags that you can use. So for example, necklace, fashion jewelry, jewelry, jewelry gram. I didn't even know that existed. Um, but there's like lots of different ones that it will suggest for you that's associated with that word. Um, and then you can check other people's posts like like that are appearing at the um, in the Explorer page. Now, OK, nice. And do you post when you do your posts, Halima, do you put all of the hashtags in the body of the main post as soon as you post it? Or do you stick well, it in the comments or do you break them up? What's so I your thoughts? Say one thing before I say that um, is like the, the category. So having, you know, each hashtag has like millions and millions of posts. So making sure you have a combination of um, very low hits on that hashtag and medium and really, really high is super important. So that's the- Oh, that was your three tiers, yeah, your three exactly. levels. Oh. So, so the number of other that. posts on that hashtag. Exactly, and you store The busy it ones, somewhere. the middle ones, and the, the quieter ones. Okay, nice, exactly. nice. You have to, the, the, the quieter ones are usually longer hashtags. That's just like a tip for you yeah. to know the type of hashtags. But yeah, um, you were talking, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah I was gonna, do you put them okay. in the comments or do you put them in the, the main Okay, so it doesn't matter, but it does make a little bit of a difference, like a few seconds, um, because as soon as you post, Instagram like starts to put it in different places. And so if you like spend, you know, you post it and then you're like sitting there trying to write the hashtags in the comments, it, it there's that, that time lapse. So it can, um, you know, help, it, it can hinder your post from doing um, as well as putting them on the and right now you don't really see the hashtags until you click um you know see more so it's fine to just put little dots and then let them um go at the very bottom of your post nice halima um i guess what went through my mind then is if what's the are there any top tips that you think with instagram that we haven't talked about that you think hey like here's a little trick here's a here's a thing that i learned Here's the thing that if I shared this piece of value, it would be really useful for people. Have we have we covered all the juicy stuff or is there something that we might have missed, Alina? There's always more. <laughs> 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 oh, but it's like, OK, so the no, like a few um, tips is like um, collaborate a lot on Instagram. So work with other people that have your ICA doing Instagram interviews that is like a really good way to grow your channel because what happens is their audience automatically sees you and then they can go on your page and follow you. Um, so that's like a really good thing. It's like having, um, so like, for example, right now, while we're on here, you can just like put on Instagram and kind of do a kind of dual thing. So you're doing Facebook and then you're doing Instagram at the same time. So you can yeah. always do that. Um, so lots of collaborations um, on Instagram will help you grow. Um, not focusing on the numbers and focusing on providing really quality, um, good content to your people. So looking after the people that you already have, well, they will spread the, the news. You don't have to do it. So take care of them and the rest will follow. I love that. Katie, what else do we need to go before we let Halima uh, go and have a well-earned rest and uh, and prepare for Ramadan? What what can we what can we uh, what can we ask Halima? What's on your mind? Well, um, I can listen to Halima all night. She's just I'm just <laughs> absolutely captivated. I just wanted to. I just want this to continue. Um, I've learned loads about Instagram, and um, I'll get a sharp um, get get better at Instagram. I think for pop up. Uh, my question isn't Instagram because I am fascinated by your business and you, how well you come across, how you, how you describe things, your personality, your energy shines through. Oh, thank you just, so much, Katie. The way that you speak, <laughs> it really does. And I just wanted to say where you're going. I asked it before and I, I, it was like my filler question. That was it. No, that yeah, was I've a really good question. question. <laughs> I've got a whole load of questions. whole questions here. Um, I've been doing my prep. And but my question here is, what's your big goal? What's that thing that you dream of? Where is that? What is it? Um, so I, I want to be able to give as much as I can. In, I, I know this is going to sound like a Miss Pageant, like, you know, <laughs> I want to save the world. No, but like, I really do um, want to help um, people abroad. Um, so 
I, it, I don't know if um, uh, any of you know this, but I, I, I was a um, refugee in this country. Um, I came here when I was nine years old, completely illiterate. Um, I didn't know anything, like I didn't know how to speak English or write or read in any other language. So I had no formal schooling. Um, so I came to this country and they gave us a house, they gave us everything. And what happened was like that stayed with me and it made me feel super grateful for everything that I've been given um, in this country. And so I want to be able to, to be that kind of beacon of hope for another person. So like pass it down and be able to with the money that I get and people don't even know this because I don't share it, but I should share it more. But 10% of all of my business um, money, not even profits, like all the money that comes in, the first thing I do is like take 10% of that money and give it to charity. Um, and that's like something that means so much to me. I think it's um, there's no point of that's like my why like if there's no mm -hmm. point of what I do if it's not that and that's how I started my business wanting to help other people um, so the the big thing I would say is like um, helping others and uh, you know what I, I want to say so much but I, I actually want to say like thank you like take the the time to say thank you to pop up because um, you know with with the second business I'm able to help startups with Instagram and I and at the beginning I thought this was just such a trivial thing and I just thought I wouldn't be really helping anybody and it was literally like poppers and the the pop-up business like just pushing me forward and saying this is what you need to do and and I've been helping women like I have so many women that I just now I'm just looking at them and I'm like I am so proud of you you're going online you're going live you're creating posts that I just would never imagine and I just I, I kind of feel humble like like and I just feel like so good that you guys are doing this like to help others because then they can help more people and you're just creating this kind of ripple effect um, that will like I feel like it, it's definitely something that I just want more and more people to know about pop-up so that they can you know, do what they're supposed to do as well. So I just want to say an official thank you to both of you, Katie and Simon, because when You're I welcome. attended, it was both of you that um, taught me what I needed to learn. <laughs> hey, it was a pleasure. I remember, I guess the, um, the the little huddle that you had with people in that community center in uh, Pimlico, that was the very first yeah. version of the social hot, wasn't it? That was the, yeah. that was your first... <laughs> You kind of, you put your hand up and you went, right, who wants to learn about Instagram? I've got a few thousand followers. I can teach you some things. And there was this kind of hardcore group of about six or seven women that stayed behind after class yeah. and huddled with you and talked about Instagram. And I think, I think Eileen might have been one yes. of those people, right? So Eileen is, um, she's commented in here and she said, thank you. She's feeling inspired. She says, this has helped motivate me again to get out of my cave. Thank you, Simon, Katie, and Halima. So she has she's <laughs> added lots of A's and some love and some kisses from her, yeah, which is I'm cool. I'm seeing some of um, the first students, see, like Rashida, for example, Eileen was one of the very first students. Do, do you know what? The support is just, it was like out of this world. Like I was like, I have a course and they just kind of believe that I would be able to deliver that value. And that's like what poppers do. Like they just help each other and they're just there like to really take care of you. And we actually have a small group of women that I want to mention it from the pop-up that we built this like mastermind and we we help each other through this process, you know, um, and Eileen and Rashida, Rania um, are, are, are in the group. Kavino is another one. Kavino is the, the photographer, photographer. Yeah. Um, she's amazing. So all my beautiful pictures are from her. Um, and um, Francesca is another one. And we just have this group of like, and we're creating this amazing friendship that is just, I can't imagine like me being in this spot right now. And if it wasn't like just taking that, like that kind of step to go and do a class at the um that in Pimlico and by the way I wasn't even gonna go that was like it's so far away but <laughs> I decided because I live in um Edgeware so it's like so far away from it but it's it was so worth it. Halima it's been absolutely brilliant I think we're gonna pause there because there's a yeah, bunch of comments coming in lots of people saying thank you I know you'll dive into those Jack has added the link but we'll make sure it's in there 
If you want to know more about uh, Halima, you can find her on Instagram. You can go to the website, thesocialhop.com, and you can find her at, at Blackboard English on Instagram as well. So, Halima, you've been a complete inspiration as ever. Oh. Thank you so much for giving Thank up your you. time this evening. Um, if you want to watch this video, if you have, if you missed the start uh, or you want to share this with someone, all of our videos go on the Pop-Up Business School website on the Survival Guide. We also post the video to our YouTube channel and it will, of course, be available on our Facebook page as well. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Next week is another big week on uh, these live streams. We'll be back every Tuesday, every Thursday. We've got a millionaire joining us on Tuesday to talk about how she retired early. The millennial revolution, Christy Shen is joining us on Tuesday. Wow. Uh, and then on Thursday, we've got uh, a friend of mine, Jamie Smart. He's a Sunday Times bestselling author. He's written a book called Clarity and a book called Results. He's a coach, trainer, an all-round legend, and he is my go-to Yoda. So he's going to talk to us about, about some of the... Um, the stuff that's in his mind at the moment about coping with the lockdown. Uh, he's, his stuff on the mental health is amazing. And the books that he wrote, I, I read, have been transformational. Sorry, Katie, there was a couple of extra business books I might have read last year. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll see you on Tuesday next week, 9 p.m. Thank you, Katie, for being wonderful and legendary as ever. Uh, Thank Halima you. and Katie, good night, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you for bye. watching. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>